here was the F1 screen, and we've talked about. It. I mean, there just there is no way to get around the implications of this screen. This is where the capital flow is. This is where the big money enters the market. This is how they plan their positions. And you can see the market has rejected prices below 1900, and it appears we've rejected prices above 65. And this is our trading range. So really, a close above 1950 uh, opens us up to this 58 area uh, to 65. This is where the next little band of resistance will be if we can close this above 1950. Uh, we came in with higher lows. That means you want to get long to see if you can take out resistance. Uh, the money is flowing in on the long side. And so our idea to be a buyer in that 4042 area, uh, to see if we could take out 1950 would work. The counter idea was if you couldn't take out 1950, uh, then it was a good place to get short because it is a cardinal number. It's a very, very important number in the E-mini hierarchy. So that's the F1 screen is telling me to find a place to buy it. The F2 screen is, in, uh, is congruent. It agrees. We're dealing with a P. And again, this is a pretty important number. So this 5650 area is a low volume number. And uh, then we've got the next low volume number is at 60. So this will be basically 55 to 60 in our 65 area will be where resistance are if we can close it above 50. Um, now, there is some confusion out there. P's mean retest resistance and or higher. They don't necessarily mean higher. A P tells you to get long to see if you can take out resistance. If you can't take out resistance, you exit the trade. Position. So the easiest trade to call right now, assuming we close right here at 50, would be sell failure to take out 50, 52 in Globex. And then the second sell will be in the 55 area, plus or minus. On the buy side, the last rotate, this uh, 45, 47 looks pretty stout. We have a little interim number there, 48. I think if 50 fails, they'll go get stops below the 48 area. you got a pretty good chance of retesting 45, 46. So we'll make buy one, 45, 47. And then buy two, we'll be back our 40, 42. So we have a lot of news to get through tomorrow. Um, we have PPI up two tenths, CORB up two tenths. We have got Empire Manufacturing, which will get more EMI at 15.5. That will get more play than PPI will. Long-term cap flows. I don't have an estimate for that. No one really pays any attention to it. Last month it was 19.4. Then we have the big number, industrial production, plus 3 tenths. Capacity utilization, nobody pays any attention to that, 79. Now, if under inflation, and inflation was increasing each month, if this capacity utilization were pushing 84, then people would, would equate that with inflation. And then Michigan sentiment at 81.7. So I think this is the number one because it's early, but industrial production really is the big number tomorrow, and that could change things. 
uh, then Michigan sentiment would be number three. So these are both number ones. This just because of the timing. That's your first reaction. Uh, industrial production, the, uh, lot of number, the numbers are coming in mixed. Sometimes they're better than forecasts, sometimes worse. Um, industrial production seems to be a little closer to the forecast. So uh, my guess is it will probably come in as expected. And um, as this number goes, so goes the market, would be my guess. So let me write down my trades here. Okay, one of the things that drives people crazy are false breakouts. And about two-thirds of the breakouts where you take out support and resistance are false. It's a play by exchange members to gun stops. So the first leg, you don't know if they're gunning stops, but the second leg is new money coming into the market, and it's the second leg that you have to learn how to play. Um, sometimes uh, the first breakout is for real, but not usually. Um, but if you can't miss a, um, a breakout ever, then you got to buy stop or sell stock to the market on those and take your lumps. Just But when you're right, you got great trade location and you're going to do, um, do pretty well. Okay, this is the note and let me get it on the F1 screen. Uh, higher low, higher high. Looking for a place to buy it. We have news. And industrial production is where the market's focus will be. And then it's post-auction week. And a post-auction week usually yields a pause day. The dealers are tired of manipulating the market. They've got to get everything corralled and cleaned up at settlement day. And anybody that wanted three, 10, or 30-year paper has satisfied their needs. So you're taking two huge components out of the market, and that almost always yields a pause day. So we will play for that. We'll sell failure to make new highs, and we can certainly buy against support at the low end of the range. You can see we're right in the middle right there. So we're going to play for a pause day. Uh, the, the news is, as we said, the Fed is not fighting inflation by raising interest rates. So the market will not pay much attention to PPI. Um, Empire Manufacturing Index, it's a minor number, but because it's early, it can cause a reaction. Uh, anything that comes at 8.30 Eastern tomorrow is the manufa Empire Manufacturing. Uh, then we move into the real number, industrial production, uh, followed by Michigan Sentiment. OK, volume-wise, if we draw a line halfway in between, it's pretty close. If we look at the shape, we've got uh, volume is kind of clustered right here in the middle. So uh, it's a D, best case scenario, maybe leaning B. And that tells me we should test support. So we're going to put a buy 1 to 5. And we're going to put uh, on the auction, we had a high. We're going to sell failure to take out 12 to 16. Now, if the E-mini is cratering, we don't want to be short, period. I mean, it's already a strong market. It's already pointed higher. Uh, and if the E-mini comes in and starts uh, to reverse and sell pretty hard, we don't like the short side. We'll have to pay up to get long. Second buy is going to be 25 to 29. Okay, the knob spread widened considerably today. Um, the best you could have bought the knob spread this week was 13 even. Uh, as of the close, it was at 13.25. During auction week, uh, we expect to make a half a point to a full point off the knob spread. And you engage in that uh, Monday, anytime on Monday or Tuesday morning. 
and it, it pays off handsomely. Uh, the bigger players are still betting on lower interest rates, and my guess is the bigger players see enough wrong in the world right now that uh, the big moves are to the upside. It's not going to be in a sell-off. The selling failure to take out four to eight is a trade. And we have a really, really pretty good chance of just a pause day tomorrow. We've got volume here at 25, so we'll make 21, 25, buy one. And then our second trade will be 13 to 17. Gold. Interesting day today. Uh, that reaction to the um, jobless claims number, I think, was um, a bit overdone, and the market did too, the way it traded. But I, uh, I mean, the BRICS nation are attacking the World Bank, really, the dollar, because we're the um, primary ba backer of that. Uh, who knows what's going to happen in um, Iraq? My guess is. ISIS can surround Baghdad, but they can't take uh, If we get serious about taking ISIS down, and I, you know, a politician is only serious about staying in office in either party. That's their job as a politician, is to get reelected. And whatever they think will get them reelected is the... Uh, line they're going to be touting. And if the um, current administration doesn't take pretty openly clear steps to defeat ISIS, or really knock them back inside their box, then uh, they're only going to get stronger. And the administration doesn't want to do this. And neither do the constituents of this administration want that done. So um, my guess is it's going to be half-assed. It's going to be tit for tat. Uh, it, it will escalate with them. We'll apologize when we escalate. And we'll kind of maintain the status quo. And so I'm not very optimistic about that getting done. 15 to 17 is the selling gold. It's aggressive. Like it a hell of a lot better as we have all week in this uh, 19 to 21 area for sell two. Uh, support is at 10 to 12. Buy one. Better support is at 5 to 7. Buy two. It's like the old Chinese maxims of war. Uh, you try to defeat your enemy without going actually into battle with them. You try to outsmart them. You try to outguess them. Uh, you make them fear you enough that they won't even bother to attack you. And uh, we, we've uh, given a lot of that away. OK, Crude is saying that uh, the supplies out of Iraq are intact and they will continue to flow. Trading target now is 95 and we're going to have to go back to the F1 screen to see where we are. And right here we busted that 9650 area. The attractor down here is 94.4. 96 comes out. We trade in $2 to $3. Pretty hard not to make it to uh, 94 when it's all said and done. Now, maybe not tomorrow. It can happen in crude oil moves pretty quickly. So on this one, we want, we're sellers. We've made new lows. Uh, we busted uh, support pretty handily. So there's your 96.25. We're at 95.52. So on our sales.
They'll be selling in to 96. So single print right here, 75 to 96 will be sell one. They got all of this up here, 90.50 to 90, 96.75. Now, one of the things that happens on crude is, is if we don't extend it early, it can come back. So this first sell is fairly aggressive. The second sell will be in this 96.50 to 75 to give it a little bit of room. So end of the week profit taking short covering if we don't continue the selling um, is what I would see we get. Put, got to buy against 95. Uh, it's a round number. It will bring in some profit taking. And then 94.50 to 94.75 will be buy two. But the uh, action in the market is telling us that uh, this market is going to sell. And then the weak profit taking or an adverse news headline could take, turn this market around in a hurry. Okay, the euro. Longer term, it is a sell. Why do I say that? Lots of reasons. Uh, the economy uh, is contracting, but we just have all of this selling out of 136. 35 and a quarter, 34.75, 34.35, So this market is pointed lower. I think they're going to get stops below 133.40. And as we go down, you can see we got the low volume numbers at 32.84, another low volume number at 33 even. So I think we're headed for 133 um, and would like to get short especially above 134 in anticipation of that. So right now we got pretty good buying in the 3350 area. Uh, we'll leave it at that and we've got the last rotate up stopped at 85 then 134.10. So on the sell side, uh, selling this 85 to 95 area, sell one, and 3405, sell two. On the buy side, we'll make it 50, make it 50 plus or minus five, and then letting them get stops beneath this low over here. We'll make the buy 30, 30 to 40. And we'll see what happens. So that's it for August the 14th. My goodness, the month is halfway over. We have, what, a couple more weeks left of summer. Uh, let's in and I